blacksmith's daughter by birth. Good storytelling in traditional singing. It depends on delivering a performance that is captivating, singing that you have to stop and listen to in order to understand it, but are compelled to stop and listen to, uh, singing, that, singing that takes you by the throat. So she came to Annapolis and there she died by the yard. One reason I was attracted to the Irish songs is because they have the most beautiful airs in the world. One evening of late as I rambled. One thing about those airs is if they do it well, they're almost like micro improvisationalists. They never lose touch of the basic structure of the tune, but they can shift the, the tune around a little bit to fit the words. As she roamed along Erin's green shores. Well, I've always been interested in traditional song. I <laughs> lived in a family of people who loved to sing folk songs. When I was about nine or 10 years old, they brought a young Jean Ritchie to sing in our school gymnasium, and she absolutely galvanized me. And by the time I was in college, I was beginning to perform in the village coffee houses. I became more interested in Irish traditional music, formed a partnership, I did, with Pat Skye, who was a very famous revival folk singer of the late 50s, early 60s, but had gotten interested in Irish pipes. So we formed a record company called Green Linnet. And we went off to Ireland to record Seamus Ennis, who was the king of the Irish pipers at the time. And he taught me a great deal about what to listen for in Irish music. I was trying terribly hard to do the highly ornamented Sean Noss singing. I didn't think I could do it, no matter how hard I did. So he said, why don't you go sing Irish music in North America? So you'll find a whole wealth of material there. Fare you well, father and mother, likewise to old Ireland too. Fare you well, ye sister and brother, so kindly I'll bid you adieu. My name is Peter Bryce. I'm from Annapolis, Maryland, where my family has lived since the 17th century. I'm a 12th generation resident of Anne Arundel County and a 10th generation Bryce of uh, Bryce of Annapolis, actually. When I was in high school, I, I was introduced to Billy McConaughey. So I learned to play the accordion from Billy. And then I went to study at the University of Newcastle upon Tyne in England, and I met Don McGuire. And that began my deep foray into traditional singing. Sir Patrick read a tear blinded his eye to Norway, to Norway, to Norway, all the fall. In my lifetime, Maryland has changed a great deal. So I, I really would, would like to form my life around being able to keep that history. And I see traditional singing and, and songs as being a big part of that. Cruel thing, this cruel thing unto me to send me out in winter time to sail upon the sea. I'm a hard working miner, you can see by my hands. Although I am honest and free. I was usually singing for songs where the words mattered tremendously and the social context of the songs mattered a lot. But what I yearned for was to study music that seemed to have a, a, a real hook in people. Music that wasn't just for show, but that was an expression of people's experience with the real world. There are many people who ask me, why do you sing those terrible murder ballads? And why do you sing them from perspectives of no good people? I 
I mean, there are lots of execution ballads and confession ballads where people are taking joy in the very crimes they committed. You know, the stuff that was being done to women by their by their fathers, by their brothers, by their lovers. Stuff too unspeakable to mention, and yet just listening to them and identifying with those songs in some degree it was like my me too moment she was mourning the wrongs of her country as she roamed along erin's green shore you can glimpse through songs the enormity of the problems that people faced from their small perspectives <laughs> You know, or they're, maybe I should say they're individual perspectives. Oh, small is good. <laughs> I do real, realize that they are telling me history. They're telling me a history I wasn't taught in school. The songs are often the um, music of the people who are not the dominant class of the British Empire, but the ones who are cannon fodder. In a way, these old songs are a little bit like journalism. You're trying to find the truth in other people's stories. And in danger, I never know fear. 